What's up guys, my name is Jake and welcome to Abandoned, episode 47. This is the show where we talk about some of the most interesting abandoned places in the world. This episode is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Go to dollarshaveclub.com bsf to get your starter kit for just $5. Almost two years ago, I talked about the now infamous and demolished Pontiac Silverdome in Michigan. But over a thousand miles away in the great state of Texas sits another enormous stadium with its own tumultuous history. So today, let's take a look at the now abandoned Houston Astrodome. All the way back in the 1960s, Major League Baseball was quickly growing more and more in the United States. Over in Houston, Texas, the city was expected to get two new teams under the condition that the city built a covered, air-conditioned stadium. So the city and their enthusiastic mayor set out to build which at the time was the country's first dome stadium. An enormous and impressive engineering feat from architects Herman Lloyd and W.B. Morgan, along with Morris Architects. As construction began in January of 1962, the final design brought the structure to an incredible 18 stories tall, with the dome spanning around 642 feet across and covering around 9.5 acres of land. At the time it was built, the stadium could comfortably hold around 42,000 people and became an outstanding piece of architecture for the city of Houston. By late 1964 and right on its $18 million budget, the stadium was completed and as the city's new MLB team, the Astros, moved into their new home, the building was given the final name after its new team, the Astrodome. So on April 9th, 1965, a sold out mega crowd of 47,000 people along with President Lyndon B. Johnson and tens of thousands more across the country watched the Houston Astros play against the legendary New York Yankees. All in all, it became a momentous beginning for what many called the Astrodome as the eighth wonder of the world, and as the Daily News called it, the Taj Mahal of sports, the newest and greatest American sports stadium ever built. The world-class facility was also outfitted to the highest quality with 53 luxury box suites, five different restaurants, and each of those 42,000 regular seats had comfortable cushions for an enjoyable viewing experience. The stadium also became the first in the world to use a new field technology called AstroTurf the fake grass which is now used in almost every indoor field in the world. To solidify this area of Houston becoming the ultra-tourism hub, across the street and connected to the main Astrodome facility was a brand new theme park called Astroworld. In the following years, the Astrodome held many major events, becoming a huge part of the city and one of the most famous stadiums in America. At one point, it was even the third most visited attraction in America, right behind the Golden Gate Bridge. Not only was it a marvel in design which hosted performances like Elvis Presley and Evil Knievel, but it had special parts of it which people would remember forever. Like the hosting staff which were dressed in space suits and called cadets, going along with the 1960s sci-fi theme of the Astrodome looking like a flying saucer. It was memories like this which stuck with a lot of the sport and concert going public. By 1989, in order to keep up the American Disabilities Act and to meet the needs of the Houston Oilers, the Astrodome closed to go under renovations. Along with making the building more accessible, the overall capacity was increased to now hold almost 55,000 people, and the stadium could now host various sporting events from the MLB, NBA, and NFL. By the early 90s, the Astrodome was used as the major setting for the 1992 Republican National Convention, to which George H.W. Bush became the Republican nominee. By this time, the Astrodome was nearing the height of its popularity as pop star Selena Quintanilla Perez took the stage as over 66,000 fans watch her perform, just one month before her death. Over on the sports side of things, both main teams, the Oilers and the Astros, wanted a new stadium built as the 1960s era building was starting to become a little too dated for them. However, once funding was denied to both teams, the Oilers had moved states over to Tennessee. This sort of forced the city's hand in building a new ballpark for the Astros, which instantly put the future of their home field into question. As more and more people began to see the Astrodome as a dated venue, the days a major team would be playing there were numbered. So as the new ballpark was being built in downtown Houston, the team announced their last home game at the Astrodome was on October 9th, 1999. 
By the early 2000s, more and more of the major events which had been held at the stadium had found other and newer facilities. During this time, the city was awarded an NFL expansion franchise with the Houston Texans. However, instead of utilizing the now teamless Astrodome, the city instead built a brand new $350 million stadium directly beside the Astrodome. The new facility, which was now called the Reliant Stadium, opened in 2002 with Houston's new team, and with an increased seating capacity to over 71,000 people. To make way for the new stadium, some of the former facility structures for the Astrodome were demolished and replaced with flat ground parking, which caused problems for the the theme park across the street as they began to get into a parking dispute. With the new shiny stadium built and open for fans, the Astrodome became almost irrelevant as major events like the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo moved elsewhere. The now increasingly tired looking structure loomed in the shadow of the Reliant Stadium. While the Dome did host a George Street concert with a record 68,000 people attending, by 2004 the stadium was on its last legs. With less and less events being held in the facility, the operating expenses were beginning to skyrocket with little revenue coming in. Then, in 2005, the Astrodome found a very unlikely use. Around 300 miles east of Houston, Hurricane Katrina had just ripped through Louisiana and Mississippi, doing immense damage to New Orleans. Immediately following the disaster, the Department of Homeland Security had arranged a deal to transport thousands of people who had been trapped inside the New Orleans Superdome and stage them inside the Astrodome. This had lasted through the end of August into early September, to which the Reliance Stadium had just continued with regular games, and the Astrodome was left dormant. Across the street, the now Six Flags Houston, formerly Astroworld, had fallen into some financial trouble, and by the hand of its own company, Six Flags decided to shut down, then demolish the entirety of Astroworld. And by 2006, the once sprawling theme park was now just an empty plot of land, leaving the Astrodome as the sole remaining building in the once tourism mecca. By summer 2008, the city's inspection officers had sealed the dome's fate as it was closed until further notice, following various health and safety code violations. The stadium was left in disrepair, with a staggering estimate of around $30 million to bring the building back up to code. With the stadium sitting abandoned and nor the county or a private party willing to put up the money, in 2012, Houston spent around $500,000 in a study to find out what to do with the decaying building. It was found that there was great public support to keep the Astrodome, yet no matter what repurposing use they found, it would likely cost the taxpayers around $124 to well over $300 million. The city began looking into different revitalization ideas, all costing in the tens and hundreds of millions of dollars. All in the meantime, it was costing around $2 million a year just in maintenance. Keep in mind, too, that even if the city wanted to just remove it completely, it would still cost upwards of $25 million, since you can't just implode a structure to its proximity to the Reliant Stadium, and the entire building would need to be completely gutted and removed of asbestos before demolition. By the end of 2013, the city had planned and executed the demolition and removal of some exterior elements of the stadium, like the ramp towers and small ground structures like ticket booths. Just a month prior to this, taxpayers voted down on a $300 million revamp proposal, which again put the fate of the dome in very grim light. The city and county continued to take in suggestions and proposals for the Astrodome, like in 2014, when a new sort of bizarre plan came to light, which proposed demolishing the structure, yet leaving its exterior styling as sort of a skeleton around a new flat park which in the middle would have a miniature replica of the Astrodome. This plan was set to cost around $60 million and, well, never got off the ground. Other proposals included a convention center, a luxury hotel, a community space and park, all of which had little financial support and just never made it off the drawing board. While all of this was happening, the Astrodome continued to sit in the hot Texas sun, now gutted of seats and completely abandoned. In late 2016, a brand new $105 million proposal was submitted detailing a plan which would utilize the Astrodome in a new way. The schematics called for a raising of the Astrodome's floor and utilize the new ground level space as an indoor parking area. Above would be 9 acres of event space. 
At this price point, city officials had actually approved the first part of this plan, and just a few months later in early 2017, the Texas Historical Commission had voted to mark the Astrodome as a historical structure. This now meant that no matter what, the former stadium couldn't be demolished unless authorized from the commission. This was great news for supporters of the revitalization plans, and the full $105 million was approved in February of 2018. So now, after 12 arduous years of failed ideas and almost certain demolition, the Astrodome is set to return in 2020. Though, in mid-2019, the city had run into some budget problems, as the air conditioner was, for whatever reason, not factored into the renovation budget. So, if the approved project does proceed, then a more realistic opening date would be around 2021 or 2022. Though, given the history of this facility, maybe even more. When I began this piece on the Astrodome, I didn't really understand why so many people wanted to save a structure given its costly past. But I began to understand that so many people, not even just in Houston, saw their first baseball game there, or it was their first major stadium. They watched a football game, then went over to Astroworld for the evening. It was a place which gave so many people incredible memories. And now as sports fans and concert goers peer down onto the Astrodome from the Reliance Stadium, now called the NRG Stadium, they ask themselves, how did this happen? And it's a good question, because really, the Astrodome was already enough, and if they had just used the money they spent on the brand new stadium sitting right next to it, and had completely revamped the Astrodome, I don't think the city would be in the problem it's in right now. But at the end of the day, after all these mistakes, Hopefully one day sports fans will get to revisit and relive the abandoned Astrodome. And so we are ready to play ball in the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Since we've been hard at work at filming my new documentary, I have completely let my appearance go. So thankfully, this episode is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. Last year, they sent me a starter kit, and I absolutely loved it. So I was even more excited to see now, not only does their starter kit come with their premium and genuinely fantastic razors, along with three tubes of their shave products, but now it also comes along with an oral care and shower set, including a superb toothbrush, a trial-sized toothpaste, and three tubes of their new showering set. Personally for me, I have and will always love their premium razors, and I am so glad I don't have to go to the store and constantly buy new ones, since they ship right to your house. If you want to test out Dollar Shave Club and reinvent your bathroom experience, you can go to dollarshaveclub.com bsf to get your first starter set for just $5. Seriously, you should go do it, and I'm just happy they've sponsored me again since I get to have a nice shave again. <laughs> anyway, guys, my name is Jake. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>